All right, the time is officially coming out. I'm super excited, you guys. <sighs> For you guys who know, I've had this vehicle uh, since 2000 and I want to say 19. And uh, it has been a roller coaster of rides with this vehicle. Um, so I bought it from a uh, SPL uh, guru of the game. Uh, he used to have eight tents uh, in this vehicle for a Mecca, Mecca Car Audio. He won the uh, Modified 3 World Championships three years in a row. The vehicle's done well over 158 decibels, clamped about four or 5,000 watts. So the vehicle has been through uh, the run of the mill. Well, a few years ago, uh, about 20, 2018, I think it was, uh, I go to a car show out there in, um, in Knoxville, you know, uh, meet, meet a few of my guys out there, and uh, I asked them, you know, what happened to the old CRX? They said, well, it's actually sitting in the field doing absolutely nothing has been for the past year. I said, you're kidding. Um, the guy who owned the vehicle, his name was Mr. Carroll. I said, how much does Mr. Carroll want for the vehicle? He said, thousand dollars. I said, are you serious? A few weeks later, I'm there picking it up. So this is where the story gets absolutely crazy. I actually almost died in this vehicle the very first day I got it. So we got the vehicle started and running. We got the brakes, everything checked, and we thought everything was going good. So Mr. Carroll lives on this really steep hill. Well, we thought we had the brakes figured out. Ah, we didn't. I get to go on down the hill and I had my trailer car in front of me and uh, I can't slow the car down. And we're going down a sharp hill. I'm going 30, 40, 45 miles per hour and I can't stop and I can't pick my phone up to let the person know what's going on. So there I had to swerve in the left lane to go past them so I don't run to the back of them. And then as I'm going past, I look over and we made an eye contact like, oh shit, here we go. So anyways, I kept, I kept going. So I'm going down to the actual main road. So the X of the road is a five lane strip, two lanes this way, two lanes this way, and then the, mid, the median. So I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna jump the curve and jump over the grass? Am I going to um, jump out of the car? Like, what am I gonna do? I can't stop this vehicle. I get down and I look to the left and I look to the right. No cars coming absolutely at all. I said, okay, I'm gonna try to turn it. So I got down there at the end of the road. I yanked my wheel and the car is slid, but the road was completely flat. So I slid, I slowed all the way down and I got the car in the middle of the, middle of the road and it finally slowed down. And I had enough momentum to continue to go down the road to turn to the gas station to turn the car off. So yes, within the first, I don't know, two minutes on the car, I almost died in this stupid thing. But anyways, we got the car uh, over there. I finally got the brakes bled properly in the correct order. And then we drove the car from Knoxville, Tennessee, all the way back to Nashville, uh, which was about two and a half hours to two and a half, three hours. So a uh, pretty good drive. The car made it clearly. Um, so I'm super excited. So I have a DC Audio uh, custom lever six sub that Rusty built for me a few years ago. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put a box in it and take it to Slamology. This is 2019. 2019. Built the box, built the lithium battery, got a Tarium's MDAK. Everything's loaded to go in there. Thursday, we're leaving out Friday morning. Thursday, I go to work, you know, getting your last day in for work. I get ready to go home, the freaking car won't start. I said, well, that's it, that was my sign, not to drive the car, it's a freaking four hours away in Indiana. So I didn't go to Slamology. So the car sits in the back of my parking lot of work for about another month. I threw a starter on it, a new alternator on it, still can't get this thing to start. I said, what the hell? Anyway, so we get the car, get it towed to the house. I'm done with the car. I let the car sit there all of 2020. Now, anyone knows 2020 was the worst year to do anything. So 
uh, tried to sell the car, tired of sitting there, tried to sell the car. I posted on Facebook for 500 bucks. Nobody wanted to buy it. Nobody knew what was wrong with it. I couldn't even tell people what was wrong with the stupid thing. But, you know, that kind of, that kind of what happened. So I let the car sit there for a whole year. Then um, I got into an accident at work, you know, a truck accident. Lost my keys. My keys had the one key to the car on the key ring. So now the car is locked in front of my apartment complex. I can't even get into it. But oh well, I don't even care anymore. It's 2020, I have no money to even put into the stupid thing to even get it working. So it sits all 2020. And January 2021, I move it to my new spot. I get a garage about three months later. So it's about March of 21 now. I said, you know what, I'm gonna get the car running. So we push the car down to the garage, we pull in there. Me and Ray, we get in there, we get the diving. We cannot, for the life of us, figure it out. Now, it's an old Honda, so it can't be too much to figure out, right? Spark, air, and fuel. We got the fuel. Clearly, we got the air, but we have no spark. So change the distributor, change the spark, spark plugs. Everything has to do with still nothing. And then one day, I'm just going through the harness. Somehow, one stupid wire in the wire harness got snipped, cut, pulled out something. And Ray just touched the wire together, and I crank it, and the freaking car fires up. First touch. And I'm like, oh, we're on one. So I'm fired up. So now we're throwing the car together. We finally put in the sound system and put the amp in there. It sounds amazing. I'm super static. We get the car cleaned up. We're getting it ready to go to, uh, I think it's called Triple Fest, um, the Incriminated Audio Show. So I'm going down there with my buddy Pop Tart, who loves going to car shows. Mind you, it's 2021, so I'm hyped. The sound system in there, cool. We go over the car, I put new tires on it, get the brakes done, change the oil, everything. Go to the car show, car driving's fine. Go to the car show, do a few demos, enjoy the show, perfect. Time to come home. Now, Huntsville, Alabama is only about an hour, hour and a half from my home. So it's not too far by any means where I live at. So on the way home, the car started smoking. What could that be? So I pulled over, don't see nothing, not ordinary. Come on, let's get back on the road. So I'm driving again, but this time the car shuts off. Like what the hell? So he pulled over. The markets on buddies in the car behind us, and we're driving. I'm like, bro, the car turned off again. So we sat there for two seconds. I popped the hood. No, still, it's, as soon as I turned the engine off, the car started smoking. So everything looked completely normal. And I go to check the oil, and there is zero oil in the engine. Now, I'm frustrated because I changed the oil the day before the car show. I had two witnesses that watched me put the oil pan, the dipstick, everything back into the engine. Folks, I got under the car. There was no oil from the dipstick, from the oil pan. I did, not the dipstick, but no excess oil from the, um, the oil plug, from the drain pan, nothing. Engine is completely blown. So right now, about 45 miles uh, from the house, we get a tow truck. We get it shipped at home. So now I'm a defeated again with this stupid car. Defeated, 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 defeated. So mind you, the car almost took me out when I bought it in 2019. Then after a month and owner did, the car would start for a stupid wire. So the car sat for a year, plus I lost the key. Then I finally get the car started, go to first car show. Car was great down there, blow the engine on the way back. So I get back down here. Nobody wants to work on my POS. Nobody. No specialty shop. Nobody that I know from Facebook wants to work on this piece of crap. So I'm like, man, what do I do? So I call one buddy named Chris Gregory, who's been helping me find a little small fender pieces for the car. He tells me, hit up a guy named Matt Duba in South Carolina. So I hit him up and he said, hey, bud, let's put a new motor in, new transmission. 2500 bucks, done, done deal. But there's one problem that was seven hours away. So let me back up. So I got a little ahead, but 
So after we got the car towed back from Huntsville, Alabama, the car sat for a whole year because I was done with it, clearly. Then I get that, that itch again, and that's when I found out and met Matt Duba and got the car shipped out. So that was 2022. So now we have in it a B18 B1 from a 94 Integra uh, with a uh, G17 GSR transmission uh, connected to it. Um, we went through everything, head to toe on the been rebuilt. The motor has 38,000 miles on it when the original car was totaled. And they pulled the motor out and put it in the back of a um, engine shop. This is how crazy it is. They put the motor in the back of an engine shop and it's been sitting there for 10 years. Before I purchased it and we went through it last year and upgraded everything before putting in the motor. So that was 2022. He only had the car for about four or five months at that time. So I get the car back. I'm super excited. I'm pumped. But now I got a little extra money in my pocket. So instead of me, instead of me enjoying the car, I want to take the car and take it straight to the paint booth. Cool. And I just spent, I don't know, three, four grand because we added more stuff to it like we always do. Uh, I send the car to the paint booth to get done, to get redone head to toe. I paid the deposit while waiting for the deposit. I got an itch to buy a freaking motorcycle. So the money I set aside to buy the, to have the paint job, I take it and I go buy my Jixxon 1000. Was it a smart move? Absolutely. Should I have done it? No, was it a smart move? Absolutely not. Should I have done it? Absolutely not. But did I do it? Absolutely. So that means that the car ended up sitting for an additional year because I bought my motorcycle instead of getting the car done. But, but we're here now. Mistakes have been made. That's the story. I'm gonna post a whole bunch of pictures showing you kind of timelines of everything going on. But we're here now. We're here now. The car has been paid off as far as the paint, uh, paint, uh, paint job, the new body kits here. I have all new interior gear to go in here. Um, we have changed everything from the strut towers um, I'm talking about to the the uh, the coilovers. We have new rotors in the back. No more uh, drum brakes, so we have new rotors in the back. New braided lines to the back. Um, everything about the car has been touched. Everything mechanically. We got a new uh, alternator from Brand X, a 240 alternator with the uh, small pulley on to make sure it fits inside the motor. We got. Uh, some amplifiers. We got bunches of bunch of carbon fiber. We got so many pieces for this car that I have been saving over the years that's at home in my tote, in my garage, waiting for this moment. The time is finally here. On Monday, this thing is finally getting pulled into the garage to finally get uh, to paint booth to get repainted. I'm super excited. Um, I'm gonna post a bunch of videos going all the way uh, as far as taking this car from looking like this to looking like a show car, it will be in a few more weeks or a few months. But once again, thank you guys. I'm glad you guys rock with me. For you guys that have been um, hanging with Mr. Shocky for years in the car audio world, get ready. I got something special for this one. New wheels, everything. Just stay locked in. Stay locked in. Subscribe to all the platforms as always. And, uh, man, let's just get it. I can't wait to tell y'all what color car. I'm not going to say the color of this video. Uh, just know it's going to be bright and beautiful. Let's get it. Mr. Chocolate, we out!